What's up, YouTube fans? Today, we're going to take a look at the Marine Morphers Aircraft Carrier. Yes, you heard that right. His name is Aircraft Carrier. Um, and this definitely has some uh, KO vibes going on. I actually got this from a company I don't normally buy from uh, just because I couldn't find it anywhere. It wasn't in any of the places where I typically buy from. Um, it definitely wasn't in U.S. retail. So I had to go foreign, and it was really relatively cheap. I think it was like 50 bucks, but the shipping was well, uh, kind of expensive. Even with that ship expensive shipping, I didn't get a box, so I don't have the box to show you, but I do have the instructions here. And you can see super, super simple and cheap instructions. It is in Chinese, and it's just very simplistic. Uh, but you can see on the front it says Marine Morphers, and somewhere on here it says Aircraft Carrier, but it might be a different name in Chinese, but... There are the instructions. So I actually got this because I'm going to customize it into a broadside. I've always wanted a broadside and I don't know if we're ever going to get one, at least a G1 version of one because it's so big. So I figured this is a pretty good placeholder for now. And fun fact, I actually, as part of my day job, my real job, um, I did get to go on a carrier, um, which is a once in a lifetime opportunity. Not this, this is a very old carrier here but uh, on a modern day carrier and uh, amazing pieces of machinery so that was another reason I wanted to get this is it's the first aircraft carrier transformer that's you know semi masterpiece scale so let's take a look at this mode I'm gonna start in the aircraft carrier mode I think he comes in robot mode but most of the reviews you've seen if you've seen any started the other direction so I figured I'd go this way nice 17 there you got a molded in anchor some molded details along the side. No paint, just molded details. Uh, you do get kind of a nice smooth surface here for the aircraft. On this side, you do get the tower there. It is molded, but there's no painted detail. That, that could stand to have some painted detail on it. Uh, but there you go, pretty simple thing. It does have die cast up here. This whole front section is die cast. It's very heavy. It feels nice in the alt mode, but unfortunately it causes too much weight uh, on the backpack in robot mode. We'll show you that a little bit later. It does come with some stands. They look like this. It's just a two-piece stand. You just plug it in like that. Come to the bottom here. There's two little peg holes. And you get, the, get that plugged in right there. And you get two of them. There's another one back here. So you get that plugged in. And now you can display it on that stand. That's actually pretty nice. I, I, I think it was, I appreciate them including this. So if you want to display it up like this, you can. You also get some little mini jets. They're just done in a gray plastic. It definitely could have stood to have some paint, but I understand they just threw in the jet just to have it. They gave you a ton of these. So I'm just going to, do this and fast forward, I'll put all these on here. Alright, there it is with all the little mini jets on there. There's 14 in total. So you can load it up. I put some on the back there. Not too bad. I do wish they had a little paint. You could probably paint them, but I put one on the front here. They don't peg in or anything. They just kind of sit on the surface, but it does work for a display piece. I really like how that looks overall. And for a quick size comparison, there it is next to MP10 Optimus Prime. And yeah, this will never scale. No matter what, who makes it, you're not going to get a in-scale version of Broadside in the carrier mode. Um, but it is a nice display piece, but obviously too small. All right, now let's get this guy transformed into his robot mode. And it's a relatively simple transformation. Go ahead and unplug this from here. It's just two pegs holding it in. And fold this down, bring down this handle, and that makes a sword, which is kind of neat. Set that aside. Go ahead and take the tower. You're going to slide this inwards on a slider. Come to the bottom here. We're going to unpeg these panels. They're actually going to lift out and then up. They're actually tabbed in right here on the side. So you're just undoing that tab. See them on this side? Unpeg it, pull it up and out and set it like that. All right, we're going to come to the bottom here. Unpeg these hip skirts from right here. Bring this one backwards. You just set them all back out of your way, and we'll take care of the legs. Unpeg the legs together, they're actually tabbed in. This is a very top-heavy figure, 
So you might have to hold it up here, but it's hard to show you on camera with one hand. But you're going to slide these upwards, slide the foot downwards, unpeg this from here, and that's going to tab in on the back. Allow you to slide the foot down, and then you can take and lift, lift up the foot. And now these two tabs are going to fit into the slots on this panel. So line those up, get that pegged in, and that's basically one side done. So we'll do the same thing here, open this up, slide the leg down, unpeg this from here, put that on the back, slide the foot down, rotate the foot so it opens up like this, and then make sure these two panels plug in to these two slots. There and you can actually open this up a little bit, but um, later I'll talk about these legs. But they are not the most stable things. All right, so let's work on the upper body. You can take these arms, pull these out from here, and we'll come down to the side, and we can rotate those around. This is just going to bend at the elbow. Open up this panel here, and fold out your hand. Very masterpiece-esque. Same on this side. Fold this up. Fold out this panel. Fold this up. And get this like this. Right. And now we'll take care of this upper piece here, which is kind of a disaster. But use a spudger and separate this. This is die cast up here. So we're going to get that separated. These are going to come down like this. It is very top heavy. These are going to fold up here at this joint. You're going to get this folded forward. Uh, this piece is going to open up here and it's going to sit down and should end up like this on an angle. All right, so same on this side, I'll show you again. Open up this panel right here, bring this down and forward. Alright, and final couple steps here, we're going to take the arms and rotate up here on this joint and then bring it back down on the shoulder. You can just belt, bend at the elbow. Same on this side. Bring that down, you can see his legs are flopping all over the place. We'll talk about that a little bit later. And then we're going to take the head and actually, before I transform it, you can see there's a nice flat surface here. People are using this to customize it into broadside because there's actually some pegs there. So you could peg a piece in here and easily customize it with a you know broadside style chest. But you look forward on this, rotate this around, rotate the head around. This is going to peg right back into the back of there. So line that up and peg that in. There is Marine Morpher in his robot mode. And it does actually look pretty nice. Um, there are definitely some issues with stability. We'll talk about that as we get to articulation. Um, but as far as the paint is concerned, if we get in a little bit closer, we got silver paint here on the face and the sides. We have this marine blue for the eyes. Yellow paint here, a little bit yellow up there. A little bit of that marine blue paint there. Uh, is there paint there? I don't think so. I think these hip skirts are painted in the maroon. And that might be it. A lot of it is just plastic color. Let's go over the articulation. I do want to talk about some of the issues. So the head Actually, you can move these if you want. You can kind of put them in different configurations. Probably the best thing to do is just take this whole thing off to take the weight off of him. He's just too heavy. If you're customizing this into Broadside, you're going to remove this stuff anyway because I don't think Broadside had all these, you know, missile launchers on him. Um, but that has a little bit of articulation on its own. The head is on a double ball peg, so... The neck is on a ball peg, and then the head itself can rotate. And you also get side to side, and it rotates all the way around. So you get some nice movement out of the head, nice tight joint. Shoulder rotates around on a ratchet joint. You actually get a butterfly just due to the way it's designed. So you can bend this inwards, like that. Goes out to the side, uh, friction up to there. Actually gets pretty high on that. You have a rotation at the elbow on a ratchet. 90 degree bend at the elbow on a ratchet. Uh, no rotation at the wrist, which is kind of strange, but you get a single pin for the fingers, and that's really it. That's very chug style for those hands. Coming down to the waist, you have a rotation here. It's a little hard to activate, 
So you really have to uh, lift up on the ab crunch. So that's on a little joint. Once you lift up the ab crunch, then you can rotate. And it's really this little back piece of the um, tower that's getting in the way. But once you lift it up, then you can rotate it and put it back down a little bit. Um, it's a little quirky, but you can use that joint in, in concert with the ab crunch. Coming to the legs, you have a hip skirt here. The leg can go up to there. There is a hip skirt back here. They can move out of the way. The leg can go back to there. Out to the side, you just kind of want to move this back, but get up to there. You have a rotation at the thigh around the universal. 90 degree bend at the knee on a ratchet. Here's where they failed pretty much is the knee. The, rat the knee ratchet could be a little little stronger, but the ankle needed to be a ratchet. They made it a friction joint, so this rotation is loose, this back and forth is loose, and that's what causes him to fall down, you know, very easily. He's very top heavy due to the die cast. These two pieces are die cast, and not only that, they're leaning back on him. You can see how they're angled backwards, so all the weight is on his back. Um, so he tends to want to fall forward. As far as accessories, you can use the sword here that we formed earlier. There's a tab down here. You open up the hand, it'll fit in. It fits in at a weird angle. <laughs> so it looks like that. It's kind of off to the side, it's not straight. And you can see he likes to he likes to fall down just due to the, the way the hips are. But it's not a horrible looking sword. It's just I wish it was straight and I wish it wasn't hollow on one side. Uh, but there you go for accessories. I didn't see any way to use these stands in this mode. And the jets uh, don't really attach anywhere. There are two little peg holes on it, but I don't see a place to actually attach it. And for some quick size comparisons, there it is next to the Magic Square version of Optimus Prime and the New Age version of Optimus Prime. And I put this in here because he is about the same size as the Magic Square, maybe a little bit taller with these shoulder cannons. But Broadside's a pretty big character, so it might actually go better with a Legend scale collection. Because the carrier is closer to being in scale, it's still not in scale, it's probably a little small, but closer. And then in robot mode, he towers over Optimus, so it may work for something like that. Um, but for me personally, I'm planning to put him in my MP collection as an MP bot, so I'm going to customize it. But either way, there you go for comparison. So final recommendations on the Marine Morpher aircraft carrier. I'm going to have to give this a 2 out of 5. I can't recommend this thing. It, it just has too many problems. Um, number one, the biggest issue is stability in robot mode. Right now he's barely standing. A gust of wind is going to knock him over. The sword is barely in the hand. It's just kind of hanging on by a thread. And I will um, just show you and demonstrate in a second. But he really, really can't stand very well. And it's mainly due to the loose hip joints, the loose ankle joints. Um, just not not well made. Um, it does look pretty cool, and uh, it's actually a really good beginning for if you're going to do a custom broadside, which is the reason I bought it. Um, but if you're looking for a quality robot, let me just demonstrate. If you just touch, he just he just wants to fall. He wants to fall. And it's mainly due to this, but it's also due to this. Um, and he rarely he just yeah, it's just not the quality's not there. Um, but if you are planning to use it for custom fodder like I am, then it might be worth it. But do not pay more than 50 or 60 bucks for this guy. Um, I did pay a little bit more for shipping just because I got it from an international retailer and they charge a lot for shipping. Uh, but uh, less than 80 to 90 bucks is what I would say if you're trying to get this guy for a custom. If you're just trying to buy it on its own and use it as a figure, I can't recommend it. But that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned. I will have the custom parts and you know kind of my process for making it into a broadside um, so we'll see how that goes uh, that might be a little while from now so thanks for watching we'll see you next time